there's a lot of very different legacies. Take the legacy of Harry Bentley, for example. He started a vision of creating an accountancy school that is now one of the premier business universities in the world. On the other hand, we have Adolf Hitler, who has left us a legacy of human suffering of unprecedented scale with tens of millions of deaths and of genocide. And Adolf Hitler's genocide to the Jewish people was not the first of the previous century, but rather the second after the systematic extermination of the Armenian people by the Ottoman Turks. And Hitler used this as an excuse when just before invading Poland, he famously said, after all, who remembers now of the annihilation of the Armenians? Thankfully, Armenians not only survived, but thrived. And we are very proud because it is amazing to see that the Ottoman Turks really killed 1.5 million of us out of 2 million of total population. We have really made a difference in this world. And Armenians have excelled arts, in sciences, in sports, and in academia. Let me show you my first favorite Armenian. We are sitting in a building that bears his name. Greg Adamian has been the president of Bentley for 21 years. And during his tenure, he did some amazing things. First of all, enrollment doubled. He created 27 new buildings at a cost of $70 million. And the endowment grew from 400,000 to 60 million. All that in a space of 21 years. So he really changed the course of this university. Who knows this guy? Exactly, Dr. Death. That's what the media called him for many years. His name is Dr. Jack Kevorkian, and he took it upon himself to assist with uh, patients with terminal illness to, uh, with assisted suicide. And he performed 130 such attempts. He spent many years in prison and his tombstone now writes, he sacrificed his life for the rights of everyone. And that is powerful, that is a legacy. And then we have this guy that you probably don't know, Anybody knows this guy? Dr. Damadian, he's the inventor of the MRI. And then we have Jib Bagian, who has spent 334 hours in space. And again, Andre Agassi, one of the top tennis players of all time. He's half Armenian, and so is this diva. Everybody knows Kim Kardashian. Uh, but uh, Cher Sarkisian is also half Armenian and she's very, very proud of it. I would be impressed if you know this guy. Yes? Charles Aznavour. He is called the Frank Sinatra of France. As you may realize, our, our, all of us Armenians, in order to escape the genocide, we had to moved to different countries, like my family moved to Greece, and uh, Aznavour's family moved to France, and he thrived there by writing 1,300 songs that were sung in eight languages, and he sold 180 million records. He's one of the biggest benefactors of Armenia, but the largest by far is this guy, Mr. Kirk Kirkorian, given Armenia over $1 billion through his 
Lindsay Foundation for much needed infrastructure projects in Armenia. Kirk made his fortune by building mega resorts in Las Vegas. And although he also bought the MGM studios for many years, he was trying to create a film about the Armenian genocide, but he couldn't because the Turkish lobby is so strong. It still resists the word genocide and anything that brings the subject of genocide to the public. But I'm happy to say that I'm sure some of you have noticed already that two days ago, the movie The Promise premiered in movie theaters all around the US. And hopefully soon it's gonna to go to the rest of the world. And it is a movie that he helped finance. So it is powerful. It is the genocide. It's something that's of a stigma to us Armenians. And this, my last example of an Armenian leaving a legacy. She's an amazing lady that decided at 82 years old to write a book, to write a book about her, how her family managed to escape and survive and thrive after the genocide. And it's difficult to write a book at 82, especially if you're not a writer. It took her two years, two years of passion, two years of determination to write this book. And this is her family, four generations in one picture. And I'll give you a hint. On the top right, you can see me. Because yes, Adrine Palangian is my grandmother. And I'm very proud because she has really influenced my life. And this is her presenting her book to the public. Again, at 84 years of age, she was very passionate, a very loving woman, not only giving to her family, that was very important to her, but also giving to community. And she has influenced me in many ways. One way she influenced me is balance. And I feel that we need to live our lives with balance. And these are no new ideas. Ancient Greek philosophers have been saying these things for 2,500 years, but these ideas are so relevant today. Their legacy lives on. So here I am with Aristotle on his square in Thessaloniki, which is in the north part of Greece. And it's a summary of balancing the seven pillars of life. Of course, it is career, financial independence. We're in a business school after all, but it's also family and health and friends and peak experiences and civic responsibilities and giving back and also spiritual development. And balancing these things is not easy, but it is something out of challenge. And if you go close to it, you're gonna be closer to living a fulfilling life. So my very recent experience has been, picture this, this exercise, uh, Greece, is in its eighth year of severe depression. It has lost 27% of its GDP. That's actually worse than the Great Depression here in the US. And it hasn't recovered for eight years. Unemployment for Greeks is at 26%. Unemployment for the youth, for people under 35, is close to 65%. So, you can imagine there's no building activity. And it, I was called to help a group of companies involved in building materials. And on top of that, the cherry on the cake is that there is a family feud. So it's a very difficult exercise. 
but more than restructuring financials, changing the business plan, changing the strategy of the organization, you realize that your actions change people's lives. Because through our collective actions, we manage to secure jobs and create new jobs for younger Greeks. And that is powerful. So, no, so career is not only about money, it's about changing people's lives. And family is super important. You need to be investing time to your marriage because it's like a garden. It needs a bit of watering every day. And so Santorini to the rescue in this case. And health is very important. And I found my health pill, which is sports. And I also call it my midlife crisis. It is, it, uh, water skiing in particular keeps me physically strong, but also mentally strong because it's a very technical sport. Friends, and if you ask centenarians around the world, they're gonna all agree that sharing these experiences, sharing your life with friends make it all worthwhile and so do these peak experiences and for me that's important i guess i'm an adrenaline junkie but most of all what really makes my day is giving back i'm a very proud member of the bentley global alumni board where we try to serve the school by forging alumni relationships around the world because let's not forget, Bentley is a very international school now. And I'm very, very happy to be associated. And I get so much energy from the other directors of the GAB. And I really, really feel privileged in helping shape the school go to the next century. But I've been involved in organizing other volunteer efforts. And again, let me remind you, Greece is in crisis. We need to help Greece. And we decide to create an innovative grassroots campaign with no help from the government and no help from large corporates to promote Greece in the center of the world. This is Times Square with a billboard, an animated billboard to promote tourists to visit Greece. And this was so powerful so powerful that CNN and BBC took notice. Because of this media coverage that, of course, none of us paid and repeated itself when we ran the campaign in London, media experts estimated that the initial amount was multiplied 50 times. So the media coverage Greece got because volunteer efforts really make a much, much larger impact. I'm trying to instill this to the new generation. This is my son, some years earlier, helping me reforest a burnt hill near Athens. And I try to say to him that it doesn't matter who burned the forest, whose mistake it was, if it was intentional or not. It's our duty and responsibility to help bring it back to life. And I also do my best to remind my kids that they should be proud of their ancestors, proud of their heritage, because at the end of the day, this will give them even more strength. This was the first question that popped into my head when I was asked to talk about legacy. What will my kids remember about me when I'm gone? And I want you to consider the same question for you. How will your kids remember you when you're gone? Because our actions every single day, and Natalie mentioned that a little while ago, define our legacy. And it's every single day, and it's the trivial stuff, the small stuff. And for me, other than the time that I spend with my kids, the quality time, or the not so quality time, the time that I spend with my kids and everything that I try to instill in them, 
is what they're going to remember, but they also, I also want them to remember balance. I want this to be something that they remember, that they should be balancing their lives. And a lot of people will argue that it's, it's difficult. It's like an elephant trying to do acrobatics on a ball. But my answer to that is balance is not something that you find. It's something that you create. Thank you very much.